Okay. Now we have some sound on YouTube. <laughs> oh boy, that was that was operator error there. Sorry about that. I can't blame that one on the technology. Now let's get the Facebook people up and running. <laughs> sound coming soon, I believe. All right, now let's see if we can get some sound going on Facebook. Oh my. We did have some, hello, hello thinker, I know. That was my mistake in the sound department. But now we have, uh, on Facebook, we have problems that are not my mistake, believe it or not. There are some just uh, some god awful drastic technical issues. I I have so many devices: two cameras, two controllers, two monitors. That's six, plus seven music, plus eight, nine, ten, depending how you count them, for sound. So ten electronic devices, and evidently they all get tangled up over with each other. Believe it or not, I got I get what I call bleed back, <laughs> where a device like a in ear monitor. Um, becomes a an interactive controller of some of my controllers. So it says here that uh, that Facebook. Okay, hang on. Well, since I've gone this far, yeah, I, in a minute here, I might just can the whole broadcast and go back and start all over. That that would be no. Nope, okay. So far, it's not looking like I need to do that quite yet. Quite, I'm very close. So now, it said uh, my monitor. <laughs> yeah, my monitor says that uh, Facebook is broadcasting, but I have absolutely no controller. It, my, in other words, from my end, Facebook shouldn't be seeing a thing because my my camera is saying that that we have no feed going to Facebook but Facebook monitor says we do all right that's as much as I can do I'm gonna stop there hello a, a, a and T I almost said AT and T Rose I'm sorry you probably get that all the time AT Rose and Nancy Smitherman good to have you both here and thinker I'm gonna proceed I have no in-ear monitor which really irritates me because I can't can't hear what you guys are not hearing. Be that as it may, I started this portrait on um, Saturday, I think it was. Maybe I started Friday, I can't remember. And um, I, I, I get, I'm still messing with it. I'm so sorry, this is dreadful. Could turn a good Christian man to cussing. <laughs> if you see a good Christian man around, tell him he's supposed to start cussing. Pardon me, won't. Why do you see me sweating? This is me sweating. I think it's actually worse than you think, but you don't realize that. So, all right, so I started this portrait on Saturday. I started out by just drawing by the seat of my pants, so to speak. No photomechanical means of going from the, from the photograph to just look and draw, look, you know, look and paint. And then I used a moderate cheat. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to use the word cheat. I used a moderate photo mechanical, in this case, mechanical device to go from here to here. And it got me within, I'll say within shouting distance of right, but that's not nearly right enough. And I just decided this morning just to, to uh, sort of, sort of a, oh, hang it all kind of attitude. I'm just going to go all the way to 
a radical or drastic photomechanical method to, to correct my portraits. So here's what I've already done. While you weren't looking, took this painting upstairs to where my computer and my Photoshop and my printer are in my upstairs studio. Finagled, worked around a little bit till I got this print. That is pretty close to exactly the size, same size as the painting. So do you understand I made a, in Photoshop, did a couple test prints and so forth until I got a print that's exactly or pretty close to the same size as the painting. Then I picked up this print and I laid a piece of clear plastic or acetate over the top of it. Okay? And with a Sharpie marker, not literally, but with a very sharp permanent marker, I very carefully, very carefully traced that photograph. So you can see where this is going. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to get some tape. So bear with me just a second while I run into the kitchen and get a piece of tape. There we go. Now, this, at the moment, this painting is still in uh, acrylics. It's going to switch over to oil pretty soon. But evidently, at least on this particular portrait, <laughs> I'm playing the game in such a way that I'm going to get this thing from a drawing perspective. Now, not all the colors, not all the shading, not every everything perfectly exactly correct. But I'm going to get the, I'm lining up the eyeballs here. You have to decide which part of the, which part of the painting do you want to retain, so to speak, as your measuring spot. Wow, I don't think I like that. <laughs> as soon as I say that, I start to change my mind. All right, we actually finally have control. Now, let me see if I can get an in-ear monitor for you guys. Hello, Ashland again. And hello, Bill Reeves over there on Facebook. Thanks for saying hi. And now, believe it or not, just by turning on or turning off my in-ear monitor, um, it's controlling one of my controlling devices. Do we have sound now? Do we have sound yet? We do not have sound yet. Well, there you go. All right, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I was doing. I am going to line it up with the eyes. Frankly, frankly, I'm a little dismayed at, at how off I am here, even though I was using a proportional divider quite carefully, if I may say so, on Saturday. But, so I, the lesson there is, even when you do use mechanical means, there's no guarantee you're getting it right. So now I'm using a much more radical mechanical means, and there's still no guarantee that I'm getting it right, but it's much more likely. Now let me see if I can figure out why I'm not getting uh, a monitor in my ear that is... It's because Facebook is getting no sound whatsoever. See, frankly, gang, that's why I have an in-ear monitor. Because until this minute, and also you, you two people are the only ones hearing me say all this stuff. Let's try that now. Now do we have anything coming through? Okay, we have sound in YouTube. We have absolutely no sound, and frankly, this is the kind of stuff that just drives me crazy. Technical malfunctions, and this is not user error. This is tech, this is a that is so deeply grievous. All right, 
Uh, Facebook people, as I understand it, you've been without, completely without sound all this time. And um, my deepest apologies. Well, hello, AT, a and Rose in Vietnam. How fun. Thank you, and I'm wasting all your time by, by not drawing. I still have a, a photograph here to my left. And I'm going to just start making corrections. And right now, I'm going, I'm going to uh, use a, oh. <laughs> this has been a bad broadcast so far. My pencil just broke on, on the third mark, second mark I made. So you might notice now that I'm using a red pencil. That's because my um, I already have. Oh, quite a bit of black pencil. Any use of pencil whatsoever is not traditional or typical. Okay, so I want you guys to know that using pencils is not traditional. This is atypical, not typical, but whatever to get the job done. And again, everything on the paint right now is acrylics. I'll be switching over to oil as soon as I get the drawing right. And as I said, all right, enough of the bad news. The fun part about doing a, a radical cheat like this is, if you can call it fun, is sort of like finding out where you messed up. And also, by the way, finding out where you got it right. <laughs> so far on this particular painting, I'm a little bit more dismayed by where I got it wrong than I am happy about where I got it right. So uh, let me give my, my usual, my typical disclaimer, if you will, about the, the use of any kind of photomechanical means. I used to call this cheating, and then I realized I was damaging some souls by calling it cheating. So now I call it photomechanical means. It's absolutely legal. I've always been said that. I've Maintain that all the way along. Absolutely legal, so to speak, to, and of course that's in quotation marks. It's absolutely legal to, to cheat and to, <laughs> to use photomechanical means. The downside is if you want to become a better artist, now sometimes some of you don't care. You just, and there are times, like right now for me, when I don't care either. But if you use a lot of this, these photomechanical means, to, to achieve your, your, to execute your drawing, then your drawing skills are stunted. Either they're not growing very fast or they're actually uh, going down. And both of those prospects um, do not please me at all. The good part here is I'm finding out all the places where I was wrong. <laughs> Again, a little bit depressing, but better to find out than to not find out. Ooh, I got this crease right there. I got, I got exact, exactly the right place. Woohoo! Everything else is wrong, but I got that one line in the right place. Aren't you proud of me? Oh, and I got her, her nostril and her nose are pretty much, oh, exactly in the right place. Now, this smile line is not quite in the right place. And I'm really embarrassed about her mouth. I got it the right size, but I got it tilted at an angle, by the way, which is the, the weakness of the uh, uh, proportional divider is getting angles right. So that is the weakness. For that, I used to help me, and of course, as you can see, it didn't help very much. I used this block of plexiglass with vertical and horizontal lines in it, that helps a little bit. But even so, this, this, this afternoon, this broadcast is mostly a humiliation for, <laughs> for how bad I, how, how 
badly I did. This is not a happy discovery, but it's got to be done. So let me go, again, let me go back real briefly to all this kind of stuff. Oh, I got I got that I right. <laughs> well, that's that's when I lined it up with, so that doesn't count. Um, I got part of this I I right. Um, let me see if I've done with Nancy. I'm going to leave her there for just a little bit. I'm going to pick up a small brush and believe it or not, some almost black, not quite black, but almost black acrylic paint. And before I remove the plastic, Doug, do you need me? Uh-oh. Is there is upstairs or down? Oh, to carry it upstairs? Well, I'm going to try and carry it all by myself, the other one, but to get the old board out, it's so long that you're desking it in a way. I'm afraid I'll even keep my back, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right, gang. My buddy Doug is, is doing uh, home improvements in our attic, and I need to help him. So, sorry about that. Be gone for a few minutes. Yeah, it is. Nice. Okay. Wait. Oh, okay. You're not. Okay. This doesn't need to go downstairs. This one just gets out of there. Can, can we just lean it up against the wall? No. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. Move some of the stuff. Obstacles out of the way. All right. Yeah, you go down there and. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Hold that just for a second. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hi, right, well. Oh crap. Okay. Thank you. All right, sorry about that, gang. That's going to be the nature of the day today. Can't be helped. Uh, like I said, I've got I'm work, I've got a, a friend building stuff in the attic, and periodically, I need to. Um, abandon you and go help him carry stuff to and from the attic so before I said before I leave before I get rid of this plastic um, my my correction sheet my go by even though I've already traced uh, red lines I'm gonna go ahead and get some of those marks those lines uh, painted over Discovering more and more colors that I need to open over here. Opening my acrylic paints. Oh, 
I'm mixing mixing some opaque acrylics over here just so that I can mark up some of these corrections. I'm not terribly focused on on uh, color. I want to get close in the uh, in this the acrylic stage, but but close is good enough. It, it doesn't need to be exact. So, just that little bit right there. Then, you know, these are my friends, Paul and Nancy, some people that I actually know. They were married some years ago and uh, have graciously hired me to uh, do their wedding portrait. Uh, I have, I have a uh, I think a total of seven different little commissions that I've got to work on this week, so I'm excited about that. Happiness is having lots of work to do. They're all being done at coronavirus uh, prices. Um, which is part of the reason. So a little while ago I started talking about... Uh, um, hello Richard Tardell. Don't know if you're still watching, but hello. Hope you are. A little while ago, I, I started again making reference to this principle that using what I now call photomechanical tricks or devices, either one will do, to to capture your image, to accurately draw your image completely legal, has been done for centuries and is still done. So, okay, I want all of you early journey painters really to absorb that, take a deep breath and go, oh, you mean it's okay if I cheat? Yes, 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 absolutely. It's okay if you cheat. You're in good historic company, a virtually, uh, uh, what's his name? I always forget, David, uh, <laughs> who wrote the book several years ago, 15 years ago or more about showing that all the almost all the greats through history cheated quote unquote used photomechanical means to to uh, capture their subjects with the great exception of Rembrandt David Hockney that's the name I'm looking for according to David Hockney um, and I don't know how he did it but he's he's did it his thorough his research was very thorough he caused quite the firestorm of controversy when his book came out because a lot of people didn't like the idea of their heroes, um, quote unquote, cheating. Uh, but in fact, almost all of them did, again, with the glaring exception of Rembrandt. And that is quite the exception. Um, all right, so let me, uh, let me go. I keep distracting myself and getting slightly off, off topic. The use of photomechanical tricks and means and technical devices is perfectly legal, okay? So absorb that. You, Again, you early journey painters, take a deep sigh of something, relief, and say, oh, thank goodness. I thought it was just me. Um, but there's a big but coming. There's a big, there's a big but. You, and again, so you understand, it's legal to cheat, quote unquote cheat. And I'm trying not to use that word. It's legal to use these devices. The, the downside is you need to understand that using these devices stunts your growth. It, it either, either slows down your uh, learning curve, your growing ability to see and draw, or it even can make you get worse. And I know this from experience because that's exactly what happened to me as a young man when I was a, an illustrator. And most of you probably don't know the, the world of illustration and the world of being an illustrator, but illustrators by and large cheat like crazy. I'm sorry, you used the word cheat again. Ah, old habits die hard. Uh,
illustrators use photomechanical means. Why? Because they're in a hurry, because they're being paid, and the ad agency needs the drawing now, if not yesterday. And they want it at a low price, and they want it in really quick turnaround. And uh, so that, that is what illustrators do. That is what I did as an illustrator. And then after years of doing that, I discovered, oh my goodness, I'm worse at drawing now than I was X number of years ago, whatever X is. And uh, that really, really, really scared me. Now, there are times when one must say growth curve and growth curve and learning curve be damned, I've got to get this job done. And frankly, that's kind of, that's kind of where I am with this, with Paul and Nancy's portrait here today. Um, as much as, so I'm, I'm rushing, if you will, much more quickly than I would prefer, I'm rushing to uh, a fairly radical uh, device, which is, in, as you saw, is on my computer in Photoshop, make this print exactly the size of my painting as I left it on Saturday. So I match that to that, get it? And then so after I printed that out, then I put this piece of plastic on top of it and very carefully, quite carefully with a very sharp permanent marker, uh, I traced Paul and Nancy's faces. And now I'm using that tracing on, on acetate to, uh, to transfer, to get the images much, much, much more accurate. Now, again, just since some somebody might be watching, if you're a, what I call an early journey painter, believe me, and because if I don't say this and you try this and, you, and your portrait still turns out bad, <laughs> that's because there's going to be plenty <laughs> of opportunity uh, to put it negatively. <laughs> we all like the negative, don't we? To put it negatively, there's plenty of room to screw up even after I do all this tracing. Or to put it positively, there's still plenty of opportunity to exercise my eye, to exercise my drawing skills. Got it? All right, so plenty, plenty, plenty of opportunities yet to come up. Um, and my, my Honest, my personal preference uh, would be on this particular painting would be I would have preferred to have worked on it longer, uh, not employing such a drastic uh, photomechanical trick as, as you see me using. I would have, I would have thought, nah, I, don't want, I really want to exercise my brain and give it a hard workout before I cave in, so to speak, before I cave in, before I yield to the need for uh, a device this exacting. Now, but I, I have other paintings I need to get to. I, I exercise my brain plenty hard on Saturday. Uh, first of all, by just drawing and copying. Secondly, by using the proportional dividers. And thirdly, now this third time is more more radical. Um, right before I, while I was setting up this afternoon, just a little while ago, a little just a little bit of an encouragement for me and perhaps some of you. Um, I uh, a YouTube presented to me a a video said, hey, you want to watch this? You know the way YouTube does. They sent me a hey, you might like to watch this, and it was. Uh, a, a video of Josh, Joshua Larock, L-A-R-O-C-K. He's a he's an up and coming big dog, artsy, fartsy, uh, good painter. Um, was in New York for many years, then he lived in Raleigh for a little while, and now he's gone from Raleigh already. Uh, sorry, there's a reason I chuckle there, and I'm just not going to get into it. Um, uh, I, I was sorry to see him leave, but be that at me, he's, he's gone. And uh, he was demonstrating a method 
for starting a portrait. And, and he was promoting, again, a, like this, a very, uh, he was using carbon paper. He had done a, a, a finished sketch of his model and then he printed it out in Photoshop, the right size, taped it to his canvas, put carbon paper, quote unquote, in between and traced it. So it was kind of, there was a, there's a strange, what's the word? You know, there's something pleasing. Some of you may be feeling this way about me and what I'm doing. It's kind of nice to see somebody who's better than you um, having to employ a photomechanical trick to get the job done. So good. I Indeed, I hope I am in, encouraging to many of you. Hello, Melinda. Hope you're still watching. And I'm not sure that my... Uh, that my live chat is really up to speed, so I... All right. So right now I'm really glad that I kept this plastic here because I'm now I'm going to double check everything yet again.
All right, we have audio back on YouTube. So sorry about that. We still have no audio whatsoever. No, we do have bad audio on Facebook. Better than none. And as I, I was saying, um, I'll, prom I'll end this broadcast prematurely and start another one because we're having so many technical issues. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's user errors. M much of the time, believe it or not, it's just the, the gremlins of technology. Get in here. do a little bit of um, by the way here part of the for part of the reason that um, really good portrait painters generally speaking um, do not um, do teethy gr toothy grins well besides for one thing you, you you don't you get kicked out of the cool club um, if you do portraits with teeth showing because it's proof it's proof that the portrait was done from a photograph and not from life so that matters to people who are trying to give the impression that they're doing everything from life it doesn't matter quite so much to people like me who are just honing their skills and trying to develop their ability to draw be that as be that um, uh, from from portraits or from life. Anyway, one of the reasons, other reasons, is that um, the, the teeth are e extremely complex, and um, we human beings we derive a surprising, at least it's surprising to me. We derive a surprising degree of our uh, visual recognition of faces um, from people's teeth. I just I think that's really amazing. In fact, I had a rare experience. Now it's about oh, 2012. How many years? Ago? Eight years ago now. I was painting up in Michigan, which is where I grew up, and I had the pleasure. Of, uh, I left there 30, blah, blah, no, 43 years ago. Left the land of my birth, if you will, 43 years ago. And, uh, but I had the rare opportunity of seeing some several old friends. S several came by intentionally to see me since I was back in that part of the country. And in particular, one dear old man. <laughs> who wasn't old when I knew him. I knew him when I was zero or two, ages two through 12. And, and he came by to say hi, which is very special. His name was Jerry. When I knew him, he was a strapping, young, fresh, fresh back, as all the men were when I was a kid, fresh back from the war. Um, when I was a kid, the old men the old men in town were veterans of the of the uh, of World War One, and the young, strapping, young, muscular, short-haired men were the veterans of World War Two. So Jerry's w was one of those. When I knew him, he was probably forty something years old. So anyway, I went back eight years ago and saw him at age eighty-five or something like that, and it was very special. But one of the things that what was a surprise to me as an artist was like, oh my goodness, I recognize his teeth. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would never have thought uh, if I had remembered my dear old acquaintance Jerry from my childhood. If I had thought about him without seeing him, I wouldn't have thought, oh yeah, Jerry's teeth. That's right, I remember Jerry's teeth. I wouldn't have thought that at all. But when, again, having not seen him for probably 40 years or nearly 40 years when I did see him I went oh my goodness I remember his teeth um, so just interesting to me uh, that was a sort of a lesson to me about how much uh, of our facial recognition 
apparatus is focused in on on a person's teeth um, and you can add, yes you can absolutely lose a likeness if I can use that term you can lose a likeness in a heartbeat by getting the gaps between the teeth wrong um, in fact on that same trip uh, up to my Grand Rapids Michigan I, I spent three weeks doing portraits from photographs on outdoors it's a long story won't get into it right now but I had a great time and one of the highlights of my artistic life painted all day or like 12 hours 13 14 hours a day sometimes all day doing nothing but portraits from photographs now you would think if I had done that I'd be a lot better than I am but there you go <laughs> um, and one young man in fact whose portrait I was doing his name was Tom he happened to be an artist set up right next to me and uh, so I was very intent on getting Tom a handsome young man getting him right and perfect I know I spent two hours on his teeth I got him right I nailed him it was perfect but it took me two hours all right I'm gonna I'm gonna leave um, Nancy for the moment and uh, Uh, um, cause we have we have audio back right let me, let me restart my uh, live chat and I guess somebody is watching somebody is watching on Facebook thank you very much you saw a heart go by appreciate that all right so let's get rid of that I will be I will be probably this has gotten kind of dirty and smudged and so forth. Um, I might use that again. I might double check. But for now, let's just go ahead and do the same process. <laughs> let's do the same process over here for Paul. So once again, a little while ago before I started the broadcast, I... Um, Printed Paul's head the same size as uh, by painting. Turns out they did match up, so that, that was a great deal. So now I'm going to lay this. I guess I'll use Paul's eyes as the. No, I can't do that. I have to use the side of her head. Okay, so that's it. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. That answer, this answers a mystery. The other day when I was painting, um, I couldn't figure out why it looked so much like his. the distance between his nose and his eyes was too short. Well, yes, slightly. But what was really off was the angle. Turns out was just the angle of his nose was not quite right. So there you go. Okay, let me repeat. Let me repeat a, a, um, a really strong, what's the word, correction, injunction, instruction. Listen up, y'all. Because <laughs> even after I said that, I had a couple of friends uh, the other day on Saturday who said, oh no, his, his are hurt, you know, the forehead's too big, neck's too long, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that's okay for you, for you to say blah, blah, blah. Um, but it turns out... Um, for the most part, y'all were wrong. Now, I did. I left his forehead here, his, the top of his head, completely unfinished. Um, so it didn't matter. But somebody said her neck is too long. Turns out that was not the correct, the correct at all. And okay, the point I want to make, beside, well, I didn't draw his eyebrow. Darn it. Um, is that many times when you're doing a portrait and you're looking at a face, you're painting, and you're like, man, something's not quite right. And you, inside your head, you think, hmm, I think it might be A, B, C, or D. You say, I think it might be A. More than half the time, again, I, I, hope, some, I hope some early journey portrait painters are listening out there because this can save you tons of... Uh, stress, bother, and so on, uh, progress. I can help you 
progress as a, as a portrait painter. Uh, I would say about 60, 70 percent of the time, you look at your painting, you say, I think this and that such and so might be off. 60 to 70 percent of the time, you're wrong. It's actually something different and you're just misinterpreting uh, what, you're misinterpreting what's wrong. Okay, and that, that can, oh good, I really got the, the inside of his hairline. I got quite, quite accurately. That's encouraging. It was quite good. Uh, the slide up here is not very accurate. There we go. Now it is. Oh, oh, this is right on. Good, I got that, I got that. Those marks, oh, his shirt collar. Got it the right length, but completely the wrong angle. There you go. That's the weakness of the proportional divider technique. Is it's good for measuring, but it it is does it, it you're still very susceptible with a proportional divider to getting angles wrong. Um, and boy did I. So there you go. I'm not very good. <laughs> um, part of the reason I really like doing portraits and and I'm work on them is hard because that's not as you may know I'm not primarily known as a portrait painter I'm a landscape artist no apologies for that and I'm not making excuses so that I can do bad portraits if you go to dannelsonart.com and click on paintings and then click on portraits I think I've got 60 different portraits there something like that and uh you know, if they're still on my website, I mean, every once in a while I go back, I do some house cleaning and I throw out, and, and all throughout my website, I throw out anything that I'm still not proud, that I, no, no, that I, anything that I'm, if there's anything I'm not proud of anymore, I take it down. So if, if, if there's a, and I have taken down a few portraits in the last several weeks. But anyway, if there's a portrait there, that means I'm, I'm pretty proud of it, okay? And um, I'm just giving that as a sort of a counterbalance to all this humility <laughs> that I'm expressing to you right now. I'm showing you the, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the dirty underbelly, the hidden secrets, the sides, the, bit, the side of um, art that, that most people don't let get out. Most people don't want you to see their mistakes and their process and their progress and so forth and here I am laying it up so to speak letting it all hang out just warts and all I'm showing you my my real authentic journey where I'm at in fact funny little story along those lines um when I first moved to Raleigh North Carolina uh, just over 30 years ago and oh David David Snyder Smith I'm drawing a blank. Rats. I didn't know I was going to talk about that or I'd have given it some thought before I started talking. But anyway, uh, I, I joined a group here in North Carolina called the North Carolina Association of Designers and Illustrators. And it was, it was actually mostly illustrators. So I was very, very happy to jump in and join in and be a part of that illustrious group that had went on for about 25 years or so. I think it's now long since fallen on into memory. But uh, one of our senior members of that organization was a man named David, whose name I forget right now, and I wish I wasn't forgetting it because I would love to tell you. I'll tell you later when I remember it. Anyway. And uh, he was actually, as I understand it, he was the founding president of the Society of Illustrators in New York City. So that, that's the mothership of illustrator associations was the Society of Illustrators in New York City. And he was the, uh-oh, he was the founding president. We got a child injured. Um, anyway, my friend David, who was in his mid or late 70s at the time, 30 years ago when I met him, uh, and he had worked in New York, he was a personal friend of Norman Rockwell's, and he, he told the story more than once, because it was kind of fun, 
about uh, visiting, dropping in on Norman's uh, studio, I presume in Connecticut, but I don't remember it because that's where, as I understand it, where Norman's studio was. Um, and uh, Norman was working, and uh, Norman was using photomechanical devices <laughs> to capture, render, and draw his, his uh, subject matter, whatever it was. And when my friend, a, a fellow illustrator, my friend David walked in, Norman Rockwell was somewhat embarrassed and had a kind of a uh, 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 mm, ha, ha, mm, mm, ha moment where he grabbed, quickly grabbed, you know, his camera or his photograph and like shoved them under the desk kind of thing. <laughs> because he was embarrassed about being caught. Um, caught red-handed. Well, I guess that's politically correct now, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> um, caught using photomechanical devices. So this, this sheepishness that I think we all have to some degree because we'd like to be able to just draw without it and we'd like everybody else to think that's what we do. Um, this is something I've had to deal with quite, and I'm still dealing with a little bit, but I'm getting better. In, in, my, uh, in my wedding painting business, which many of you know has, didn't start out this way, but has turned into full-on portrait painting at receptions. And most people, the great majority of people, of course, are just not at all familiar with the, the artistic process. Most people, the most they know about painting is Bob Ross. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> and so they have, most people have con the complete wrong impression about how, an, how painting develops. You know, it's just, to them it's just a straight line from A to B to Z and uh, no hiccups, no turnarounds, no, no reworks and that is so not true. Anyway, so I'll have brides, or, or brides mothers more typically come up to me and say, you know, make up, well, it doesn't quite look like her yet, or, you know, some such thing. And, oh, I really do have to exercise considerable control. <laughs> I'll tell you, here's a t speaking of being, in, of being transparent, me being transparent and showing you all my, my mistakes, warts, and everything. One time, it was, they, she just caught me in a moment of weakness, and she, she, whoever it was, walked up and, made some comment about, well, he doesn't look at that. And it was something, it was, I don't remember. I don't remember her tone of voice, but I just remember she was, you know, helping me. <laughs> and I was in oils, forgive me, this is not what I recommend, but I had a moment of weakness. I, j I just took, and his head was about this big, and I just took my thumb and it, <laughs> and wiped off his entire face. <laughs> I kind of looked at it with a, I don't know, deadpan, deadpan look. Uh, and my point was this, and that, that it was not, by the way, I do not approve of that behavior. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, she, she thought that, again, she, she, you know, everybody's an expert because they watch Bob Ross, and I'm being facetious about that. I don't really mean, most people don't think. But anyway, they, they don't know that it's a process. It's a, <laughs> Seek and search and execute. I almost said seek, search, and destroy, but no, seek, search, search, and execute. Step by step, layer by layers. Um, that is how most art actually happens. Little by little, layer by layer. And doggone it, I wish it wasn't that way. I'd, I'd be much happier if I could just stand up there. Again, there are some people who can. There are people who are way better than I am. I tell the story all the time. The best I've ever seen, the best in the, on the planet I've ever seen were these old Chinese. They were Asian. I had to ask them what nationality they were, and they said they were Chinese. Old Chinese guys in Manhattan that were doing, you know, portraits on the sidewalk while you waited. And I talked to them, first of all, to find out what, where they were from, China. And, uh, you know, how are you so, they didn't know I was an artist. I said, how are you so good 
And the man said, well, I started when I was five, and I do this every day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah, darn it. People ask me all the time, you know, wow, how do you get so good at this, that, or the other? How do you get good? And the answer is, of course, always the same. Practice. It's a real deep secret called practice. <laughs> I practice music nearly every day. It's not my, it's an avocation, it's a hobby. So it, I, I, there are too many days go by, like yesterday was one, where I did not practice my trumpet. I practiced a few other things, but I didn't practice trumpet, which is my main. And uh, so today I'm gonna have to make up. Today I will experience the, the lack of skill. I will, I will sense because I didn't practice this. My fingers won't work quite as well today as they did on Saturday. That is really true. You've all heard that thing. If you know, miss one day. You know, it's, it's kind of. Anyway. Practice, practice, practice. So if I were to practice portraiture all day every day, which would be fun, but it would, for me, it would require a, a turn in career that I'm, I'm not at all sh certain that I'm, so it sounds like fun in a way, because it's in a way the last frontier for me, but uh, I doubt that that's what I'm supposed to do with the rest of my life. But I, there's no question I want to be good enough, um, you know, I want to be good enough to do portraits and do them well, and in fact, do them better than I do Right now, hope springs eternal. Every time I start a new portrait, I think, all right, this, can, this one's going to be great. That's why I felt about this one until I got into it and said, oh, no. <laughs> Some of you watched me on Saturday. I had my share of trials and troubles. Today I'm having technical broadcasting trials and troubles, but for the most part, my the 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 cheater method, so to speak, the photomechanical means that I'm using is is doing its job. Now, one of the decisions in front of me right now is, and this does look, I don't know if you can tell, this looks like them. I think it's probably, probably close enough. Yeah, close enough to go to oils. All right, so I'll, I will end this broadcast here then. And uh, if you want to and I'll try to have all of my mechanical, technical, all of my broadcasting issues resolved um, at that time. Nobody's watching on Facebook. The broadcast must be really bad. <laughs> Only a few of you on YouTube. Thanks for joining me. Hello, Uncle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did I give him extra hair? No, I just haven't gotten over Oh, yeah, way up here I did. I'll have to fix, I'll fix that before, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, let me fix that right now. I think I've got some green mixed up. I don't think I gave him extra hair, although I did that too. I just made his head too big. And and I knew that when I left on Saturday, I, I just, you can kind of see, I just scrub, scrubbed out his head almost completely. But let's go ahead and fix that right now before I go. Uncle, good to see you. Um, the rest of you, so if, if uh, yeah, on YouTube, if you click the bell, then you'll be notified. Your phone will buzz or something, you know, whatever you, however you get notified that when I start the next broadcast. But it will be, I'll probably take some time here for lunch and who knows what else. I might do a little triple checking on this, on my drawing here. And that when I come back, I'll be ready to uh, launch in to oils. All right, so there, that's my, that's the end of my broadcast. Radical or drastic photomechanical tricks for correcting and achieving a likeness. And uh, I think everything else, I'm within shouting distance. It's close enough so that with oils, I'll be able to take it the rest of the way home. Oh, no, I have to do some of the uh, some some stuff down here in acrylics. I'll do that, but I don't need to do that on camera. All right. Thanks for watching Hope to see you again later today. If not have a